Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, your your publication as a web document. So we've heard for the past roughly an hour and 45 minutes the words print and paper show up many, many times. And that is a mindset of how you've authored for as long as journals have been around. And I'm going to talk about some of the steps that the AS is doing to try to recenter that um, on the web platform and give you some reasons for why that's important. Um, this is a web document. I forced myself to actually do what I was going to make. We, we think you all should be thinking about doing when you, when you author things. So, and, and I'll be uh, sending this around on Twitter for others to, to see and use. And the, 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 the summary title is we're talking about interactivity and web content um, uh, for your journal articles. Um, so there's three sort of, under this umbrella, there's three things that we're trying to do. The first is sort of, sort of to expunge the model of supplemental materials. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have this idea that you have this, this piece of paper that you, you print your article on, but, you know, the hundred figures in your atlas don't fit there, so we stick them on another website. Um, you have your software package, but that's not really useful in a print form, so we stick it on another website. And you might have some interactive figures that we've been able to support, so you stick that on another website. And, and what we're doing with, with the IOP Science um, platform is trying to pull those things all together into one concise web uh, document. Um, we're also recommending to authors that instead of placing uh, data bits, data and software objects uh, hanging off of that article, because if you've ever uh, published a tar.gz file with your article, there's no way of knowing that that's actually there, but actually to have authors place them in, in, in secure, persistent repositories and then link to them through DOIs. I'm not going to talk about that much more. I can answer questions on that. Because the center part of this talk is to talk about inspired, uh, inspired storytelling through interactive graphics. And all these examples will come in a little bit later. So right now, authors do create uh, uh, materials that are effectively interactive graphics. Right? They, they create these large atlases of figures that you can't even print out in any reasonable form and, and, and browse through. Um, they create movies, especially in solar physics. I'm amazed at the, 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 the content of, uh, of, um, of, of movies that have been created about uh, solar data. And all these things right now are not central to the article. They're ancillary. And we're bringing them in. And I, I, don't, I can't run a live platform here. Um, so I'm going to show you a movie and basically tell you what it's, it's because you're so far away, <laughs> tell you what it's uh, 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 doing. Um, so essentially here um, for the first set is, is the figure set markup. And so before you would have gone to your, um, this article and you would have uh, gone to the figure set and you have clicked a couple of times to actually get to the figure set. Now it is actually the figure itself. So when you come to this, when you have an article now with figure sets, you would click and what you, there's, a, there's a, a screen grab um, and here is a, 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 um, a film strip across the bottom showing as many figures as there are in the figure set and you can simply click through. And the nice thing about figure sets is you actually have your own title, so you have, your, you have a whole atlas of of galaxies or star clusters, and you actually have your own um, uh, figure caption. And all that is in the LaTeX markup. Um, and I am just want to be able to demonstrate for you, maybe go to the, the URL later uh, to see a little bit more how this will work. Um, the second example is that we already publish a form of interactive figure specifically for X3, X3D or 3D models. And again, this, this screen capture is going through the process of of going to that image in the article that has an X3D, an interactive figure with it, um, and then how do you actually trigger the interactivity? And before, again, you would go to a separate website and you wouldn't ever, you would have to do additional steps to get to this content. And what we replace that with is sort of a static view with a trigger for interaction. And I'll show you in a second why you need a trigger for, for a lot of these interactions. But this is a, a supernova um, uh, simulation and um, using the X3D uh, 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 toolkit. And this is author created. And that's sort of another theme that we'll all come back to is that some of this is author created and then we're thinking also about how to help you as authors create these type of interactive figures. <clears throat> so we've been publishing for over a year a, a, a few um, what we call X3D interactive graphics. Um, X3D is an open file format for, for uh, 3D scenes. Um, in order to import that into your, um, into your document, you use a JavaScript library uh, called X3DOM, which allows you to build that scene in your, in your, uh, for your figure. And it's not just building the scene. It's, again, it's not just a, a static 2D object. You actually have access to, to enhance that figure. So this, 
and what I meant by the trigger, uh, if I just simply scroll up here, um, I'll end up grabbing this figure. This is a live uh, X3D um, object. And I can set the, uh, the viewport. So it's, it has, um, uh, so the author actually created each of these tabs to build this scene. So for, for, he's, he's basically telling a story um, uh, about this data set through the X3D interactive figure. He can, he can change um, what you see. You can change what you see in terms of axes and grid labels. You can change the contour levels so you can see a different you know, view of the noise or of the, of the particular objects. A kind of cool thing that I recently discovered about this is you can actually change the rotation point fairly easily. So you can sort of change how, the, how you interact with the object. Um, so we actually have a, a, a paper by one of the authors um, entirely on the X3D pathway for interactive figures. Um, uh, it, it will be, it's on archive and you can go to his personal website. The, the final version will be available um, once we've made the transition to the new platform. And I'll, I'll give you the timeline for that in a moment. And you can also use some of our GitHub tutorials to get started on some of these things. So where do we go from here? What is this development timeline? So you've been hearing a lot about AS Journal's futures. Um, so we've been investing in, in R&D to actually bring these features in line. Um, so uh, figure sets and X3D objects um, will be centered in the articles um, in February of this year. Um, we're going to then start working on bringing audio and, and movies, again, in line to the article uh, on roughly, roughly the same time scale. And then we're also doing a, a proactive review of JavaScript technologies, things that would actually be useful that are in front of uh, astronomers today, and they might ask, well, could I use this or could I use that? And we're doing a review to see how well we can support those different technologies. And these are four of those. Uh, Plotly and, and Bokeh are, um, uh, have uh, Python um, uh, 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 wrappers, so you can actually write the JavaScript with Python. Um, uh, Aladdin Light and Worldwide Telescope have their own JavaScript uh, toolkits for creating viewports onto um, astronomical data. Um, so these are things that, on roughly the time scale of February, we'll be able to advise authors on how well they would fit within, the, um, fit within their articles. And the last is the future. We want to continue to review JavaScript technologies. We want to actually look to doing some development of tools for astronomers to create um, uh, 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 their, their, their figures. Um, and we're going to continue to do on, ongoing ad hoc. So if there are authors who want to come to us and have technologies to try out, we already have a, a, a pretty good sense of what does and doesn't work in, in a couple of cases. Um, so we can actually then, it, it's really useful to us because you know, we have these sort of cutting edge authors who want to try these things out. Then we can go back to other authors and give them specific advice. Um, and so again, uh, I would love to have a, a more detailed conversation about our development at the hack day on Friday. I'll be there perhaps actually hacking one of these um, uh, 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 tools. And um, lastly, uh, this is a, I, I didn't actually write up here, but like I said, you'll get the URL another way. Um, and you can contact um, uh, Greg or I uh, through our um, mailing system if you have any other questions. Obviously, you can ask questions now. So, okay, that's all. That's interactive figures and recentering your articles on the web. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? No questions. Oh, Josh. Can, um, you have these 3D views, right? You can click on and go to different preset views. Yes. Can you have text associated with those views? Text associated with like, those views. Here's my view of this galaxy that highlights a lot. Or here's my view of this. Right. So the, the question is, is when, when an author is creating a JavaScript figure, specifically X3D, do they have the ability to sort of have a, 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 a evolving caption that would tell the reader what they're looking at at any particular time? And, and the, 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 my quick answer is, with, with the JavaScript types of technologies we're talking about, the answer is easily yes. The, the changing the actual caption would actually involve more technology than is, nece is necessary. Um, uh, you specifically can, you have a lot of leeway in this sort of ad hoc method to write your web page, your viewport, to do exactly what you want to do. There's no constraint on that. Any other questions about interactive figures or storytelling? No? Okay. All right, thank you.